I really haven't said anything about Andrew Tate, and I probably won't tonight. But, but well, I'll, I'll make a few comments about the Andrew Tate phenomenon, you know, I would say, is that the mystery is, there is a mystery in relationship to Andrew Tate, and the mystery is, why is he so popular? And I, I think the part of the reason he's so popular is because he, he doesn't easily bend a knee, so to speak, you know? And it isn't obvious to me that he doesn't bend a knee because of his stellar moral character, but because I'm, I'm, I'm not particularly, what would you say, impressed by what he's done on the sex business front. It, it seems to me a bit on the <laughs> pimpy side, let's say. And I'm not a great admirer of pimps. <laughs> so, wait, even if they're the electronic version. And, <laughs> uh, and so, you know, but I, I don't know that much about the details of his life, and apart from that, you know, rather casual diagnosis, I'm going to leave it alone. But there is a mystery there, and the mystery is, you know, why has he captured the public imagination? And it's clear that he's become a voice, maybe, you know, maybe like a, like a, a kind of a violent rapper, same sort of attraction to young men. And that attraction is the attraction of what's, alterna what's the alternative to a kind of cringing defeat. You know, and so maybe a, a forthright aggression is a preferable alternative to a cringing defeat. And I have some sympathy for that viewpoint, you know. So, and I think Tate at least stands for that. And, and apart from that, I don't know enough about him or what he's done or what he stands for to comment. Um, and so we'll leave it at that. Peterson, could he out-argue you? Peterson and I have an interesting relationship. I, I believe the enemy of my enemy is my friend. However, I do believe it's hypocrite. I think it's very difficult to sit and talk about mental rigidity and how you should be a man who is unafraid of the horrors of the world and then end up addicted to antidepressants. I think that's hypocritical personally. Well, he also talks very slowly, which is why he would always lose in an argument to me because he's too slow and I'm very fast. Mm. Speed wits, trust me, I've been in the cage, I know. Mm. So, and he knows that, so he would never want to debate me. But I guess it depends what we're talking about. If he wants to talk about the intricacies of some old philosopher, some book he's read, I've never read the book. Maybe he could perhaps pull off a semi-interesting point. But then I also believe, I'm quick fire, bro, I'll tell everyone more, so that's no big deal. That's why Andrew Tate is so, so attractive to young men. Dude. So much. He's utterly fascinating to me. 90% of what he says scares me to death because it actually is toxic masculinity, but 10% is so good that I'm like, you cannot you know, well, dismiss this kid. People are complicated, eh? But the thing is, is that the, the more... Okay, so, so the perversion of warrior in some ways is psychopath, and you know that because you watch like mafia movies, so we all know this, okay? But, but there's a dreadful attraction in untrammeled aggression for men who are so crushed that they're castrated that's a good way of thinking about it mm -hmm. so so the attraction that the that the andrew tate persona let's say has on those young men there's actually a lot of that that's positive now that doesn't mean that that's the right target but it there are creative ways of being wrong that are helpful. Right, right. Now, I, you know, you see better examples of that, precisely that, in people like Jocko Willink and David Goggins and mm. Joe Rogan. Like, these are tough guys, you know, but they're not. They don't have the sex appeal, though. That's one thing I'll give Andrew Tate. Like, yeah, he... but that's partly because they don't want it. Yeah, you see, fair. They, yeah, but it isn't that they couldn't have it. Like, it's that they've they've decided that everything in its proper place. Rogan mm -hmm. has a family, you know, so that's, that's where he's put it. And, and hey man, good work, good work to him. You know, and that sex appeal that Andrew Tate has, that's the sex appeal of the short-term mater, that's the psychopathic sex appeal, that's the dark tetrad sex appeal. It's shallow, it's shallow, and it will get him in trouble. I mean, it's already got him in trouble. Yeah. And so that's not gonna, unless he, you know, wises up, precisely that, it'll get him in trouble. You know, and I'm not trying to take him apart. I mean, I think what he did with his, with his 
capitalization on female sexuality is absolutely unforgivable. But why? Well, that's enough of that. I mean, th that was that was beyond the pale in my estimation. There is no there's no excuse for that whatsoever. Jordan Peterson called you reprehensible. Oh, um, and only lose wait, stop. Wait, wait. Only oh, lose my heart is broken, please. <laughs> only losers love Andrew Tate. Oh, my heart is broken. Oh, no, not Jordan, not the, not Jordan Peterson. Never cleaning my room again. <laughs> Give a shit. Who cares? You know what? I don't watch any you know what I find really great? These nerds. Both conservatives and liberal alike, because they're all nerds. They make videos try to like take me down. I think it's so funny. Imagine spending four hours editing a video, but they'll be like, interesting, interesting, interesting. I don't watch it. I'm busy. I don't know what they say, and I don't care, and I don't watch it. I have no idea what they say. I don't Cool. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I have nothing against Jordan. I'm not emotional about these things. I literally, I genuinely have nothing against Jordan. I could sit and argue with Jordan. I could enter the cage and beat the shit out of him. Or I could shake his hand and be his best friend. Whatever he wants, I don't care. Mm. What do you want to do, friend? <laughs> Hi, Jordan. You want to fight to the death? Or do you want to speak on the same stage on the same side? Or do you want to debate? Or what do you want? Could, I'm not emotional about this. Like, I, it's no big deal to me. Could, uh a good thorough debate between you two be something that would be a I think it would be boring. Challenge. I think it would be boring. Because Why? I think we agree on most things. Right. I think we agree on everything. And I don't think there'd be a debate because we don't actually disagree. The only disagreement is that I think, and again, this is as someone who's watched very little of his work, but I see clips, etc. He's very intelligent and speaks from a philosophical thought point of view. I think he's very in his mind. There's a lot of thinking. And I am very action-based, and there's a lot of action. I feel like if there's a problem, his answer will be to think certain ways, and my answer will be to do certain things. I always believe in action over everything. I don't believe in stopping and thinking and reading a book from a psychiatrist and pondering why I decided to fuck that girl. Okay, Go out, get chicks, boom, get to it. So I feel like he's far more thought-based, I'm far more action-based. Perhaps we could argue about the methods towards success for that reason. But all in all, I think we agree on most things. Russell had what Andrew Tate promises his followers. He had fame, he was charismatic, and he had more or less unlimited access to short-term sexual gratification. Okay, in combination with, you know, the chemicals that make that even more likely, alcohol and cocaine, let's say. So what are the consequences? Well, I asked him, what were the consequences? You had this. He said, uh, despair, anxiety, and hopelessness. Right, but, but not just that, because, you know, Russell got himself in trouble here a month and a half ago, just about took him out. Well, it was his past coming back to haunt him. Like, and he had to scroll through his psyche and see, you know, well, in, with all these short-term relationships, these short-term sexual gratification binges that I indulged in, did I ever cross the line? Well, the answer is, well, you're going to have like 200 encounters like that. And you're not going to cross the line when you're drunk, when you're on cocaine, you're going to cross a bunch of lines and then it's going to come back and haunt you. Let me ask you about the reaction that you've had from uh, certain people who I think at one stage uh, you had a, a, a good relationship with. Sure. One is um, Jordan Peterson yeah. and the other one, Ben Shapiro. Let's talk about Jordan first. Sure. You've had a bit of a to and fro with him, but what is your view of him? I think Jordan and I actually agree on many issues. I think the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I think we have a lot more in common than we have that we disagree on. We have different views of the world on certain things. I think we approach him from different places. He's far more in his mind, whereas I live in more in a physical realm than he does. I have nothing against Jordan. I don't dislike him. I do find it, and I must be honest, a bit disingenuous and hypocritical that he speaks mental strength and then ends up addicted to an antidepressant. I don't think he should ever take antidepressants ever. I've been through worse than what he's been through and I didn't take a single drug. However, I have nothing against the guy. He says very intelligent things and I'd be interested to argue with him or discuss or debate with him, but I think we'd actually agree on most points, to be honest with you. I don't think we, I mean, he may be unhappy with somehow how I've lived my life and some things I've done, but we've already discussed the fact that I come from the lowest income area of the UK and most people around me were selling drugs, so at least I didn't do that. 
So I'm not gonna allow somebody who's a professor at a university who's had an easy life come along and tell me how people from the streets should survive. You have to find a way out. Let's get rich or die trying. But I have nothing against the guy. I mean, part of the reason that people like Andrew Tate are so attractive to young guys is because they do put up that confident, that false confidence. It's, Tate's a complicated guy because it's not all false, you know? Real people are complicated the way that, like, villains in, in comic books aren't. Tate's a fighter. It's clearly the case that he's got a certain degree of physical bravery. That's real. All right? There's an element of what he says that's very attractive to bed, bedroom basement dwelling losers because he's at least there out in the world, you know, taking the blows and he's got a fast car and he's flashy and he's attractive to women. But a lot of what he's done, especially with women, doesn't just border into the psychopathic, it crosses the line. And that's not a good model. It's not an optimal model for people who are trying to progress. But it's a strange thing because just as cynicism is an improvement over naivety, right, the capacity to be dark is an improvement over the lack of ability to be dark at all. The only thing I've ever genuinely disagreed with him about was his tweet on Israel. Truthfully, the only time I've been genuinely a bit appalled by any of his actions was the tweet he made on Israel-Palestine when he said, give them hell. I know that's an easy thing to say and it's an expression that people use and they throw it around flippantly. But I think when you actually wish hell upon other human beings, I think it's a disgusting thing to do because hell is that 15 year old girl with no legs and her parents were dead. Well, hell when is you see her crying her eyes out, begging to die, mm. that is hell. And I don't think you should genuinely wish hell on anyone, Israel or Palestinian, either anyone. I'm a humanist. I don't want anybody to die. Well, he did, he and when did, he was wishing hell on an entire he did, population. He did express regret for the way he phrased it. And that he should, and because he should it's disgusting. 20... I've not wished hell on the Israelis. Mm. I've not wished hell on the Israeli state. I don't want any Israeli civilian to go through with that 15 year old Palestinian girls going through. Not a single one. He said about you, Jordan Peterson, I'm not particularly happy to be grouped with Andrew Tate. I think there are some elements about what he does that are quite reprehensible. I'm sure he has. I'm not, I don't know everything he says, and he may disagree with some of my point of view. As I said, I have nothing against him. I don't think anything he says is particularly wrong. I think that he's hypocritical because of the antidepressant problem, and I think that the fact he wishes hell on other humans because he gets emotionally involved in a conflict, which within two minutes of it sparking off, he's wishing genocide. Mm. I think that says a lot about his personality. But overall, when he speaks at length, a lot of the things he says are pretty well thought through and pretty constructive. I have nothing against the guy. I mean, the thing about Tate is he is a complex character because not all of his brava bravado and posturing is false because he is a mixed martial arts fighter. He is a genuinely tough guy. And he is also someone who came up from the street. You know, and so you can imagine that within his soul, all sorts of different forces contend. And just, and I am not making excuses for him because I think the electronic pimping aspect in particular is, like, I think that's unforgivable. It's absolutely 100% unforgivable. There's no excuse for ever having done that in your life, not even once. And it's not even necessarily the kind of sin that you can recover from, not not without like 20 years in in serious hang your head repentance. What do you think of the woke left versus Jordan Peterson? The woke left are hateful people. Jordan Peterson is extremely intelligent. The woke left are full of hate. They weaponize virtue to pretend they care about others because they're such hateful, nasty people that they need to hide behind something.